Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I hope you enjoyed video number one in this top 10 series, and that was uh, hunts number one through five. This is hunts six through 10. They're in no particular order. There are four of these hunts. I'm the shooter. There's one of them that I'm not the shooter, but I was there, and it's just so such a bizarre situation that I have to include it. And then I'm gonna throw in kind of a, I guess an honorable mention or a, a little bonus hunt at the end, which is one of the first hunts that I filmed my son shooting his first bear when he was 14 years old. So um, leave a comment below. Please like this video and thanks for being a subscriber. Let's roll the videos. I met a fellow by the name of Mark Bellchamber who has big spruce outfitting in northern Saskatchewan. And uh, we're only maybe 100 miles or less from the Northwest Territories border. So we are way up in northern Saskatchewan. Well, Mark uh, I met him in person twice and uh, talked to him on the phone quite a bit, texting him back and forth quite a bit, and he convinced me that I had a really good chance of shooting a blonde bear here in northern Saskatchewan in his uh, bear hunting territory around a lake that's called Unknown Lake or Therio Lake, depending on which map you look at. And it, we are way out in the wilderness. It takes uh, an incredible amount of energy just to get here. You know, I had to drive 14 hours to Saskatoon and from Saskatoon I flew a small plane into Points North Landing which is just a landing strip. It's not even a town there. It's just a landing strip that's managed by a uranium mining company. And uh, from there you can either take a float plane to the camp or you can take a 22 mile ride in a four-wheeler uh, on these little Jeep Samurai things that uh, Mark keeps up here. A combination of those things and then you get in a boat and you actually boat out to the camp so I mean it's quite an undertaking just to get here it's not a hunt for everybody but holy cow has he got the bears and has he got color phase bears so I arrived at Big Spruce Outfitting with a fairly high degree of confidence that I was going to have a chance to see a blonde bear well the first day we went out and uh, we started checking trail cameras at baits and our intention was to find a bait that had a blonde bear on it and uh, the second bait we checked uh, we were going into an area where Mark had seen a blonde bear from a boat walking along the shoreline and had cub called it in so to get a good look at it just two weeks before so we went to this bait that was about a mile from there and across the river and uh, we walked in there and sure enough uh, there was a small blonde bear on this bait. We're deliberating about whether or not it would be a good idea to shoot a, a small female blonde bear, you know, a 150 pound bear, considering the fact that this is a grand slam of color phase bears and it's going to get a huge amount of uh, publicity around the bear hunting world if I actually compete this grand slam of four color phases. So he's going through the card while I'm trying to decide what uh, exactly I should do with this situation. Then all of a sudden he goes, whoa, there's a big one here too, and it's a blonde also. Sure enough, uh, there's a nice, good-sized male there, blonde bear, and so he says, go get your stuff. We're going to start hunting right now. So I headed to the boat, and I grabbed my backpack and my bow and things, and I'm going to sit in a ground blind that's just made of brush 17 yards from the bait. So I got my stuff in there, and uh, Mark said, wow, he was only here eight minutes ago, according to the trail camera picture. So now all of a sudden I'm thinking, holy smokes, this bear's right in this area. So I, I throw my stuff in the blind, and the first thing I want to do is get a covert scouting camera mounted to a tree. I got them set on video in hopes that I'll get some different angle videos of the bear as he comes in, if he comes back. So I'm carrying this covert scouting camera to... A tree near the bait and all of a sudden I look up and here is the blonde bear and he's right there. I mean he's literally 15 yards from me and he's walking towards the barrel. I called to Mark. I didn't know if I should just yell or what. I got a bear 15 yards from me and he's a big blonde bear. So I, I just backpedaled right into the blind and I hollered down to the boat where Mark was getting ready to leave. I said, Mark, the bear is here. And he said, what? And I'm like, okay, now I got to yell again. I said, the bear is here. And uh, so he grabs his cell phone and starts walking back up towards the bait until he could actually see the bear. By this time, the bear's at the barrel. He's starting to feed, and I'm 15 yards away in plain sight, and I'm trying to get camera on the tripod. I can't find my release in my backpack because when I was at the airport in Saskatoon, they pulled everything out of my backpack. They looked it all over, and then they shoved it all back in the backpack, and they didn't put it back in in the same order. They didn't put my release back in the same pocket even. 
So all of a sudden, I got a bear in front of me and I can't find my release. Well, finally, I got the, the video camera set up. I got my release found and on and I pulled up my bow and I looked up and sure enough, here's a bear at the barrel. It's broadside. I could see the ribs really good. So I just drew, anchored, and here's the rest of the story. get him yes buddy we just smoked a blonde we just I smoked them I cannot believe it I couldn't find my release in my backpack I could not believe it <laughs> I'm like oh my gosh I was just sitting there getting my stuff ready and I looked up and he's walking right in that is the craziest thing I've ever seen in my life how long you been hunting blondes Bernie eight years and where'd you kill it Big spruce outfitting in the first five freaking minutes. Are you serious? I cannot believe it. I just can't. Uh, that is. Bernie. The shot looked good. The shot looked great. Unreal. Here's the other piece of my arrow. And there's my bear. And is he ever blonde? He's big too. Look at the size of him. Oh my god. That's a nice bear. Unreal. Grand slam. The grand slam. Shot was perfect. 50 yards he went. I can't believe he went up that hill. Holy smokes, how steep is that? I'm just kind of in a daze. How many, how many hours and hours I spent on stand trying to get all four color phases. Uh, you know, I, I shot chocolates, shot blacks, and then uh, finally in 2014, I finally got a cinnamon. It's actually here in Saskatchewan, too. Uh, had some close calls in British Columbia and Idaho and Manitoba, and then finally ended up killing both the blonde and the cinnamon in Saskatchewan. And I dreamed of a lot of different ways in which the hunt for the blonde bear might end, and I, and I never, never could have come up with this scenario right here now if you think that hunt was crazy just wait till you see this one and it only happened about two hours later we're fishing to catch some fish for shore lunch and once we catch some lake trout and northern pike we head over to a shore lunch place where we clean the fish and then uh, there's a bait right there at the shore lunch place so we put the fish cleanings in the bucket of the bait and uh, we're just sitting there eating shore lunch and Heather, one of the hunters, looks up and says, hey, look, there's a bear right there. And uh, it looks like a pretty nice bear. So um, our outfitter says, Heather, you saw the bear first. Go get your bow out of the boat and uh, let's try to shoot this thing. We're all just standing around videotaping and watching while Heather gets her bow ready and this bear is circling downwind of this shore lunch, smelling everything that smells good to him. He's probably never seen humans before, so he has no idea what he's looking at. Um, but he just kind of circles back and forth and back and forth, and she can't really get a shot off. Um, so eventually the bear circles closer and closer, uh, but doesn't give her a shot. It's moving pretty quick and so forth. And then it ends up just walking right up to the bucket while I'm sitting there on a the log watching it from 15, 20 feet away and uh, grabs a piece of fish and takes off. And so um, we decide Heather should just get up in a tree and then uh, Mark is going to just coach her through the shot when the bear comes back. And sure enough, um, we all leave in the boats and within a few minutes the bear comes right back. And this is how it played out. When he lifts that paw up like that, put it right behind his front shoulder.
missed him. He'll come back, load another one. Yep. You smoked him. What's he doing? He's hurting. He's down. <laughs> He's down. He's down. Are you fucking kidding me? That a girl? <laughs> you smoked oh him. Oh my gosh. He didn't go anywhere. No. Bernie's up. <laughs> Bernie's out there fishing. Did you see it? We had a bear coming at shore lunch. Oh my gosh, look at his teeth. There's no ground shrinkage. Oh my gosh. He's beautiful. What do you think? Unbelievable. My first black bear. I think I'm good. Well, this next hunt started in kind of an odd way. My wife and I were taking a vacation, just traveling around the West, uh, pulling our travel trailer, and spent about two weeks. Well, we found ourselves in the Grays River Valley. It's a beautiful area in western Wyoming, and we parked a trailer and we spent a couple of days just kind of four-wheel driving the back roads and so forth. And uh, I remember one time looking around going, boy, I bet this is good bear country. It'd be fun to bear hunt here sometime. Well, one year later, I talked a couple of my friends into it and we packed up our gear and four-wheelers and bear bait and bows and uh, got uh, archery tags for bear and stayed in a wall tent and uh, we just had an absolute blast on this hunt so let's just kind of watch it develop starting to look like home in here <laughs> we're in the yeah, process of at home no. we're in the process of setting up camp here <laughs> this is virgil's wall tent mm -hmm. what do you think it's 12 by 16 does that sound right i think so. probably okay so it should be nice and comfy it's kind of hot in here right now <laughs> but uh, anyway, so we got this set up, and uh, as you can see, we brought a lot of stuff. We got a lot of stuff scattered all over that we're just trying to get organized. We got to set up a kitchen area yet. We're going to set up a canopy for a kitchen area. And uh, Dave's over here unloading barrels and his four wheeler. We got barrels that we in Wyoming you have to use. Uh, barrels to put your bait in so we got the barrels uh, we got some another 30 gallon drum of trail mix there Dave's getting his four-wheeler unloaded we are up in the mountains in Wyoming 7200 feet is where we're camping at here and uh, our closest bait here is uh, about a mile and then we got one about two miles to, or a mile and a half the opposite direction so this um, yeah, I'm, I just got this all unloaded, and I'm going to set this up in kind of like a little office area in the back of my trailer here. We've got a chest freezer in here. And, uh, wow, I'm already huffing and puffing. I'm not used to this uh, altitude. but So, i got a generator. I'm going to use my laptop here to look at trail camera pictures and edit video and stuff like that. And uh, the chest freezer here has... It's full of pastries right now, but it's going to be uh, eventually full of bear skins and bear meat, hopefully. Well, things started out pretty slow for us. We had the baits just weren't being hit very well. In fact, we had a couple baits that took four days before we finally got our first bear on them. Uh, but we've got three out of the four baits are being hit right now. And uh, we're getting some good trail camera pictures. I'll talk about that in here in a second. Um, we've just been checking the baits most every day, not all of them every day. But um, we've just been running, uh, running them on the four-wheelers. And uh, we just take a bucket of bait with us in case 
you know, the bait would happen to be cleaned up, which would be pretty unusual the first time it's hit. But um, anyway, we, we typically do that. Um, we've been using the blueberry spray primarily. We've also tried a couple others, but the Northwoods blueberry spray, because these bears are primarily feeding on berries right now, so that seems like a, a good choice. We're also hitting it with Gold Rush about every other day, and Gold Rush is, you know, we, we're using about a gallon of cooking oil and, and spreading it around, sp splashing it and, and so forth, and the bears get it on their feet and, and all that. Um, so what's happened now is the three of three baits are being hit by bears and interestingly two interesting things number one they're all chocolate bears or they're all brown uh, one of them's a pretty light brown the, and the second thing is that all of our trail camera pictures so far are in the daylight there's not one single nighttime trail camera picture of a bear which is strange um, but we like that well it's another cool morning here in the 30s and uh as you can see in the background there, the sun is starting to hit the mountaintops. And it'll be another hour before it gets down in here where we're camped. But uh, today is uh, today's a good day because we're hanging tree stands today. And uh, we, we sure started slow, but uh, we've got three of the four baits have bears on them now. And uh, so we're going to hang at least two tree stands today on the shooter bears uh, one of them is just a little uh, yearling that none of us at this point are considering it a shooter but uh, right now uh, Dave and Virgil are sitting by a roaring fire as we've done every morning because it's cold in the mornings and uh, gonna have some breakfast and then uh, wait a little while here make sure they're uh, the bears have been visiting the baits in the morning and uh, uh, both morning and evening in fact all day we don't have a single trail cam picture of a bear in the dark everything is daylight which is bizarre uh, but uh, so we're going to go check the four baits and hang at least two tree stands and then make a decision tomorrow's opening day so um, I'll catch up with you later in the day here Well, it is Monday morning. The season's been open two days, and uh, wheels just totally came off this hunt. I just never dreamed, if you'd have told me 48 hours ago, that I was going to be feeling this discouraged. I'd, I would have never guessed it, but uh, every bear that we've got has gone nocturnal. Well, I'm hunting the 8,000 foot bait again today. This is the bait that I named 8,000 foot because it's at 8,000 feet and it's 1,000 feet above our camp. And um, I've decided to park my four-wheeler in a different place today. Um, as you can see, I'm standing beside what is an old broken down corral that probably it looks like this at one time was a horse pack camp up in here. And uh, they've closed this area off so outfitters can no longer camp overnight up in this high country. Um, so I apologize, I feel like these videos have been sounding really repetitious, but we do have some developments here. Uh, it is day four, it's Tuesday. Um, we took the night off last night because all of our bears were nocturnal. And um, we got a new bear. Uh, I talked about one bait that seemed like it was in a terrific spot and uh, it got a new bear on it. It was hit after seven days of sitting there. Um, so it, it's got a, a really nice color phase bear on it. We, we don't have any daylight pictures of the bear yet so we don't know exactly what color it is but it's a light colored bear and uh, we put a stand up there today and Virgil's going to hunt that tonight. Um, Dave is going back to hunt where the uh, um, the one I, that I call brown sugar is at. So we've got bears on all the baits and because they had all gone nocturnal we decided to just give them one day off and hopefully we would allow them to you know settle down just get comfortable come into the bait site feel relaxed and things like that and then hopefully um, once they get more relaxed and comfortable there's more likelihood that they're going to come in 
during the daylight. It's starting to feel a little bit like a long shot at this point, um, but we do have bears on the baits. And I'm just getting myself situated here. The bear did come in the daylight yesterday when I wasn't here. I just checked a covert scouting camera. And he came at 7.30ish last night, so he came in well before dark. Well, that tells me that one of my two theories are right. Number one, he's got me figured out. Or the fact that my four-wheeler was sitting in that skitter trail might have been turning him around. So, I just made the hike the 200 yards up the mountainside from where my four-wheeler's parked right now. And at 8,000 feet, 200 yards up the mountainside is quite a hike. But I got a feeling we are going to have a bear on us tonight. The wind is right. Um, I just put some more pastries out. And this bear, like, digs through everything and eats the pastries first. And then he'll go to the trail mix and whatever else is left. I put three pounds of bacon out also in addition to another bucket of pastries. And I left the bucket sitting by the barrel just because I don't want it over here by me. So I'm really... My confidence just went way up, so hopefully, here we go. Die within sight. Dead within sight. He's big. Okay, so he crossed behind the bait. About 20, 25 minutes ago, I turned the camera on and hit record because I thought he was going to come around and come in right uh, right to my left there. But man, at, after 10, 15 minutes, I'm holding my bow right here. I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. And nothing, nothing. And then all of a sudden, I caught movement out of my right. And the bear had, was crossing the clearing around, right along the far edge of this clearing about 30, 40 yards away, right over there. And he just made a complete circle, and I just watched him. Made a complete circle all the way around. And every, he, I, I just couldn't, I wanted to get the camera on him, but he'd just go through an opening and look this way. So I never got a chance to get the camera on him until he stepped out right here and walked right to the bait. He gave me a perfect broadside shot. My arrow was singing, turn me loose, turn me loose. And I turned it loose. Okay, I got the silver skim trimmed off. Now I'm chunking this all up. And bare loin nuggets, I guess, for lack of a better word. A little rice with brown gravy. All right, boys. You told me you wouldn't make fun of me. Now remember that. <laughs> wow, that's really got great flavor. If you, if you know people who say they don't like black bear, 
try this one on them. It's really good. Now for this section, I'm going to include what is really a collection of hunts in Ontario. And um, Ontario is somewhat unique in Canada in that you can buy bear tags over the counter, um, but you can't just go hunting anywhere willy-nilly, basically. So um, I met a young guy who had a bear hunting concession up goes. there, and I worked out an arrangement with him where me and friends and family would pay him a fee to use the huge area that he had that was under his control for bear hunting so we could buy our bear tags over the counter and then we just paid him to uh, to hunt on his land basically and he, he did some of the baiting for us um, but uh, I did most of it I love the baiting part of it so I did a lot of it myself and I involved son and and a couple a couple of my sons uh, grandson and uh, had a lot of relatives that, that came along and friends that brought their friends. And we ended up doing this for four years and uh, five years, actually. Um, but the four years, we had 10 people each year and everybody got a bear um, every year. And uh, so I'll just roll through some of the footage here of uh, some of the a few um, of the hunts that were actually videoed. Most of them weren't, of course, but... Uh, um, you know, my one of the interesting things, uh, fun parts of it was my nephew from uh, Oregon. He uh, earned the money to buy a plane ticket to fly out here and hunted and shot a really nice bear on the first day, made Pope and Young. And uh, I killed uh, four bears in four years. My son-in-law, Seth, got a bear. My, da my son, Dawson, um, got a 300-pound sow, just a huge sow. And uh, we killed quite a few bears over the years up there, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Uh, the fishing's terrific, and um, it was great while it lasted. I've just kind of moved on to other things, and I'm, I'm hunting other areas and so forth. But who knows, someday I might go back and do it again. Uh, really enjoyed it. Well, for this hunt, we're headed back to one of my favorite places to hunt, the Duck Mountains of western Manitoba. We're headed out on opening day of Manitoba's fall bear season which is always the last Monday in August. This was an incredible hunt where I saw literally at least 20 bears in one sit and I actually passed up a Boone and Crockett bear that weighed 400 pounds so enjoy it. It's opening day of the fall hunting season in Manitoba for bear. There's another sow up on the hill behind me here. So I got four bears right here at the bait right now or in this general area. So hopefully a good one comes in. It's the first night and, uh, you know, I can be here three, four days or so. So I'm, I'm going to hold out. Probably won't shoot anything tonight unless that great big chocolate comes in.
been here since 3.15 and it's now 5 o'clock, so less than two hours. There hasn't been one second where I didn't have a bear within bow range of me. This is unreal. I've never had a night of bear hunting like this. I'm sure I've seen at least 14, 15 different bears so far, and one of them was about a 350 pounder. Man, I hope I don't regret passing him up. I don't know. It's gosh, you hate to end your hunt in the first two hours, but I don't know. Uh, hope I'm not making a mistake. I hope he comes back tomorrow if uh, if I don't end up shooting one before dark. I'm sure I would have shot him if I hadn't seen it. about a 400 pound chocolate about a quarter mile from here. It looked like he was heading this way while we were coming in. <laughs> this is crazy. and shot him. He's a big one and <clears throat> it's just about eight o'clock and I think he's dead right over there. I'm not sure but um, the arrow looked good. I did not get full penetration. He's a big big bear and I just think uh, I, you just from that angle you can't really drive an arrow all the way through a bear but uh, I um, I waited till he was just the right quartering away and, and put it uh, at the last rib and, and um, you know, it shot looked really good. The, there were eight bears within sight when I took the shot and right now the bears are just standing there. Uh, the ones that are still within sight are just standing there staring at him, staring right over there in the bushes. So, um, well, I think I can... This bear came in earlier. He was uh, clearly much bigger than all the other bears. There was uh, uh, four males, young males that were, you know, 200 pounders, and he looked like he was darn near twice as big as they were. So I, I passed him the first time. I'll tell you, there's a lot of activity going on right over there where he crashed. I don't know what's going on, but um, anyway, he's he, he's clearly a big male. And man, I hate to end my hunt on the first night, but I got there thinking he he might not come back tomorrow. You just never know. Sometimes these bears, the bigger ones, they come to the bait and they got a big circuit. And next thing you know, they don't come back for three days. Okay, here's my bear. He's a he's a really nice bear. I hate to end my hunt on the very first night but I mean I saw so many I probably saw 20 bears tonight and in fact I can see three right now uh, right from here buddy They're not too anxious to leave, are they? There's no, my tree really. stand. If you told somebody this, they won't believe you. I know it. They well, won't. they could see it on video. I know, but they wouldn't believe you. All right, we better get our stuff packed up, get our bear, and get out of here, huh? All right, Buster, you gotta, you gotta move on. Move on. You hear me? Scram. This is an older hunt. It's my son Sterling shooting his first bear when he was only 14 years old. And uh, we'd had a pretty good activity on this bait near our home. 
And so I went in there with them. We dumped a bucket of bait in, covered it up with logs, and then a, a while Sterling got in a stand, I went uh, about 40 yards away and hid the bucket behind a tree, and we got in the stand, and then the action happened pretty fast. Dude, you nailed him. This is, watch him, watch him. Watch him. <laughs> Dude, you told, oh, I forgot to follow him with the camera. He just crashed right there. I mean, he's right there. Dude. <laughs> Man, was that intense. I can't believe he walked right up to that bucket like that. He's groaning. There's your death groan. It's five after five. We've been here for less than an hour. We've been here for 40 minutes. Wow, you nailed him. I mean, you got him right on the money. Perfect shot. I hope I got everything on this video. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's toast, man. You got good lung blood on there. We might want to leave. We should have probably left the thermocells on until we get this photo shoot done. You see blood here? There's the blood start. Here. Here's the trail. This is the trail he came in on. This is where he tried to jump the log. Yeah, he tried to jump the log right here and just wiped out. Pretty decent yearling bear. I mean, he's not a bad bear. He's not huge by any means, but yeah, I and mean, he's covered with blood. Yeah. Wow. Look at that. Oh yeah, right there's where he tried to go over the log. All right. Are you happy with him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bear. Pretty nice bear. Not huge or nothing, but he's a decent bear. Not bad for a first bear. This is the third bear we've killed off this bait in the last few years. And there's still there's still at least one more, maybe two more that have been hitting it off. So. And it's opening day, September 1st, and we were only in a stand for about 40 minutes and all of a sudden I looked up and here comes the bear. He was a ways away, but then uh, he was he approached real cautiously and when he came to the bait, um, 
he milled around there a little bit and looked the place over and then Sterling made a perfect shot on him, nailed him. The uh, arrow went in about the back of the rib cage on the right side and looked like it went through the heart and came out through just below the shoulder on the uh, left side. So good job Sterling. Alright, now the real work begins, huh?